Hey everybody, welcome back to the carving shed here in Virginia. My name is Hunter. Today, part three of a series on different burrs for using while carving bone. Got a little uh, spiked kind of buck here that we'll be working on today for the example. And a bunch of different, so we can get it to focus, there we go, a cylinder type of burr. So jump right into it, I uh, hope you learn a lot. Again, part three is two other parts. Uh, links in the description of this video is for those videos. Okay, I know you know what a cylinder is, but just for example here, um, this is what we're going to be working with today. And I am going to be using, um, including in this video, a tapered cylinder burr, just because um, the uses are extremely similar and it would be kind of redundant to do a, a video on a tapered burr, so you're going to see both of these in the video. First thing you can use a cylinder burr for is a cut through design, and that is simply completely cutting out the bone in the negative space around your design. You can either use uh, a carbide cylinder burr or a diamond dust cylinder burr. Now, if the bone is really thin, I would highly recommend using a diamond dust burr over a, a carbide burr just because the carbide, uh, the cut is a lot more aggressive and um, in areas on a skull where it's really thin, you're essentially catching the bone more and it could possibly snap off little pieces of bone, so you don't want that. Um, but either way, uh, they both work great for a cut through design. Now what you'll generally see me doing is cutting just outside of the line that I'm carving out. Uh, and that is just because I'll come back through and clean up to the line on my design. I'll use, again, the cylinder burr to do that, as well as files uh, and rasp to get nice clean edges. Cylinder burrs are also very great for outlining a design and for the design itself if the design itself has a lot of line work. Um, I've done some in the past where it was like a Celtic a Viking style and there's just simply a lot of lines in the design and for that I am using cylinder burrs. Now for outlining a design, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that you use a cylinder burr when you do an outline of the design and then cut the area down around the design. Simply because um, when you use a cylinder burr, your cut is going to be a lot smaller than if, say, you used a ball type of burr. If you use a ball type of burr, your cut is going to be larger. Now, you may think, well, that's not necessarily a good thing, right? It actually gives you some kind of space uh, when you come back through and cut down that area. If you're using a cylinder burr, uh, your line is going to be, your cut is going to be a lot smaller, but that also means that when you come back through, you don't have a lot of leeway uh, between your actual design and the bone area that you're cutting down, and that just results in possibly nicking uh, your design itself. I'm going to elaborate on this just a little bit more because I do think this is important. When you're cutting the outer edge of a design, okay, the outline of the outer edge, if you use a cylinder burr, your cut is going to look something like this, okay? If you use a ball burr, your cut is going to look something similar to this. Now, with a ball burr, you have more space in between the edge of your line and the bone and the surrounding area. When you come back through to cut that area down to raise your design above the surrounding area, it's a lot easier to do with a ball burr as opposed to the car... Uh, cylinder burr. So hopefully that explains it a little bit better. It's just easier, you have more leeway with the ball burr to cut down this area. And another thing to keep in mind when you're either outlining a design or you're working on the design itself with a cylinder burr is the depth. Um, it's really hard to maintain a nice even depth when you're holding the hand piece um, vertical, hopefully I got that right, uh, to the surface of the skull. So what I would recommend is actually holding it uh, more at like a 30 degree angle and following your line. Uh, this does seem to help maintain a better depth of the cut.
Another option for a cylinder burr is layering, or again, going back to cutting down the area around a design or within a design. And you're going to do that, um, like, like I said, layering, and that is to create more depth to your carving. So back to our little illustration here, when you are coming back and you're cutting down the area around a design to lift it above the surrounding area, you can do that with a cylinder burr. And basically the smaller the design, the smaller the cylinder burr you use, the larger design, the larger cylinder burr uh, works better. thing that you can do with a cylinder burr is create a stippled slash textured surface depending on what you want to call it and that is simply where you plunge the tip of the burr into the bone at an angle and it just creates this kind of textured surface I've used it around the design or by itself personally I think it looks uh, really cool and then secondly you can use a cylinder burr to create a uh, either for feathers, and um, I'll try to put a picture up here of an eagle that I did before. Hopefully you can kind of see it around the, the eyes where I did that. Or a bark looking texture. And that's simply where you're taking the burr and just kind of running it um, at an angle over top of, uh, of itself multiple times. And then coming back with an abrasive wheel and smoothing it out so it gives it kind of like a, a bark uh, on a tree trunk look. And the last thing I'm going to show in this video is simply cutting out the recessed area of a design. Now I did cover this in a video about the inverted cumbers and they pretty much work identical. Uh, there may be some differences as far as the edge of your cut, um, but yeah, just plunge the burr in kind of at an angle, then use a circular motion to work out uh, an even recessed area on your design. It works kind of better in my opinion with larger uh, cylinder burrs, but you can also do smaller ones as well. And that is it for this video everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment below and let me know if there are other burrs that you would like me to cover. And if you use cylinder burrs in your own carving for different applications, comment below and let me know. Uh, I would love to see how you all uh, use the same burrs as well. Again, thanks for watching. Please do consider subscribing if you have learned something and I've earned it. And uh, check back in with me on Monday. I will have another video. Check in the description of this video for all the tools and birds that I used in the video, as well as links to the first two videos. This is part three of the carving bird. So thank you guys. I'll see you next time.